What are we going to do? We're going to talk about Firebird. The Ganzo Firebird. See the Firebird on the front? What in the Hades? And it's the FH81 and D2. And guess what? It comes in different colors. I didn't get the black one. I got every other color. It's candy. Candy on the table, isn't it? And does old LTK like cleavers? Oh, leave it to cleavers, my favorite show. There you go. Deep carry pocket clip. Right hand only. Unfortunately for you left-handers, but... Wow, how about that big old choil up the front here? Thumb disc here. I'll take that off in a little bit, and you can see how embarrassingly horrible that is without the thumb disc on it. Unfortunately, had they not cut a big notch in there, it'd have been all right to take this off. It might have been a nice clean look, but... I've got differing opinions on that from other guys saying, you know what? Heck with it. This makes it nice and flickable. Finger flick, thumb flick, like that. So, okay. And, of course, you have this thing called a flipper tab. It's got jimping on it. Not horribly big. Could have been a little smaller, maybe canted forward a bit. But, uh, okay. Uh, jimping thumb ramp type thing going on here so you can get right up and close ganzo got mine from power cutlery it doesn't say so on this page but it's 23.99 i think he charges like 290 something for shipping i bought like three or four of them and it was just a one-time shipping charge so it wasn't like three dollars per knife and that was great there's the black brown green and gray the fh81 in d2 it's a stainless liner lock okay we're done with this page now can we cut it can we cut it oh, oh yeah oh oh man that's scary as sharp that one oh wow you know what these are yeah they're really really sharp out of the box and of course Power Cutlery is a USA dealer out there in California, so I order one two days later. It's there. First class. I mean, it's not priority or anything. Just two days to get there. There's the back. Backspacer matches the G10 Contour G10 scales. You know, and the hardware's not too shabby. I mean, what do you expect for under 25 bucks? Oh, yeah. That's nice. Interesting looking blade. It's crowned on top. Isn't that nice? Nice handle. Uh, good ergos. Feels good in the hand, especially like this. Going up forward for close work. Not a problem there. Let's take a measure. Three and a half inches. 80 uh, or 90 uh, millimeters, 8 inches overall, 20 centimeters. So, 3.5 and, and 8, about the size of a paramilitary 2. Or, here's the real steel rocket. Uh, the rocket's a little bit bigger. Kaiser Yukon, closer. The Kubi Dandy, and the Dandy's bigger. It's close to a 9-inch knife. It's easy to disengage the, the lock here because of this. It's a little higher on this side, so that's not a problem. Quick over the detent ball. Great fidget fast factor. Look at this. And we'll, disen you know, we'll disassemble one of these crazies probably the gray one and i'll just leave it disassemble because i'm going to dye the scales on this one i got two gray ones so i'll take it apart i ain't putting it back together because uh i double my work there but uh we'll pull that sucker apart but that is nice next good thing about having more than one you get a little bit of you know idea of the differences between them this one doesn't drop quite the same a little tighter on that pivot this one yeah about just like the green one 
see we got for blade stock and 0.138 three and a half millimeters overall fatness it's gonna be a squeeze it's gonna be 13.6 at 0.536 feels like I said before feels good in the hand reverse grip is comfortable thumb on the pommel there yeah nice let's get a weight on it and we have 4.7 ounces at 133 grams 100 pretty much 33 grams and the same so pretty consistent there uh the detent is is acceptable i, I you know i wouldn't want it much stronger especially if you're going to finger flick thumb flick that kind of thing really nice uh, the design flow is fine disappears over here disappears into the bolster uh, blade to handle length I think you're really there uh, I really don't think you could have done much more there so that's fine tubed lanyard hole like I said deep carry pocket clip so you got a three and a half inch blade eight inches overall under five ounces of contour g10 nice stainless liners that look like they've been skeletonized backspacer that matches it's just there's a lot going on for this knife very nice um i think you know i had one guy comment that it's very similar to the to the crudo dao the dao is is that cleaver that crudo knives makes uh, yeah, the blade shape is. The handle shape, of course, isn't. And, you know, when you start getting into that, you just look at the Blade HQ poster. It's like, well, here's a buoy style blade. Here's a cleaver style blade. Here's a Tanto. Here's reverse Tanto. Here's drop point. Here's modified drop point. Here's, you know, so when you get to a cleaver blade, um, how are, you know, I just... I know it looks very similar, uh, but there are uh, other differences. Obviously, everything about the handle is different. And when you start getting the cleaver style blades, you kind of run out of options there. Uh, since you do have this disc on the top, yeah, it does resemble that dowel. And of course, this would wave out of your pocket. This thumb disc allows you, obviously, uh, when it's coming out of your pocket to catch the back of your pocket and flip open. Uh, so it's like a wave opening feature, I guess, if you want to call that. It's centered up. I don't have any blade play or lock rock on any of these. Pretty solid. And, you know, they're they're very inexpensive knives. So uh, I'm going to send one in for testing as far as HRC. Traditionally, uh, the ones that we've tested in D2, they had pretty high HRC Rockwell numbers, like 61, 62, that kind of thing. But the performance wasn't necessarily commensurate with the Rockwell hardness on the blades, which can mean, you know, blade geometry, thickness behind the edge, edge finish and you know the fact that these may be fairly low in vanadium therefore you know the austenizing quench how all that went together grain refinement distribution of carbides and for 20 some dollars i don't give a rat's butt can i can i strop it back to a good edge uh no it won't cut 400 foot of cardboard uh, working edge but okay I'm good with that. I mean, I'm not paying for 400 foot either. Comes to deep carry pocket clip. It'd be nice to have flat head screws in there instead of these button top or cap, button cap, whatever screws, you know, uh, because that decreases the amount of space that you have between the top of the screw and the bottom inside of this pocket clip for fitting in and out of your pocket. So that'd be one thing where I could say I'm a bit critical of that. 
let's see if we can take this apart this is not moving easily so let's flip to the other side and yes this breaks away so i think we figured out which side we needed to start with always just kind of give it a little tug and if it doesn't start feeling like it's going to break away don't get too uh intense try the other side first and there's a body screw okay we've got a scale and there it is g10 We've got a liner, really nicely finished, clean, shiny, pretty presentable. We've got bearings, nice, good, on both sides. Ooh, a little dirty around here, huh? Nicely done, not bad. So the bearings in here, obviously they didn't machine a place for the bearings here like they do on some liners. Uh, it was all machined into the blade itself. Closer look at the bearings. They're not ceramic. Now let's do one more thing here. Let's take this off. So that's what I'm telling you about when you take, take the thumb disc off. It's not very attractive. You know, you got this cut away there. So uh, do what you want. Uh, but I'm going to retain this on here because I really don't much favor the look of it taken off. Backspacer. And we can do that because we got to put them all in the die. So in this case, we will be doing a complete disassembly. Pocket clip and screws. Of course, take these... Uh, standoffs there you go one there goes the second one and screw finally got this knocked out of there it took some pushing it did take some pushing And that's how it goes back in, but it was pretty well stuck on there. We got that out. All right, got all my pieces, parts in here. Put them away, and parts going into the die. The leftovers. All right, we're back. Detents just fine on this. Yeah, I can snap it out if I snap really hard that way, but other than that, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, tried to fail it. So, lazy flip will get it done. Smooth opening. Great action. Eh, for no more than they cost. It's just a really interesting knife. Not wasting your money. Should be a good user. Great design. Really like it. You guys, take care. I'm going to let you go. You know what we do around here. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.